Bowman here from BW1.com. I'm going to give you my review of the HTC EVO 3D. The EVO 3D is a follow-up to the EVO 4G, which was very popular and it was released last year from Sprint. Start off with the hardware tour. First thing you notice here is a nice 4.3 inch LCD display, which looks, which looks really sharp. And it's also a stereoscopic 3D display as well. So you're not going to need glasses when viewing the 3D content on here. Above that is the 1.3 megapixel front facing camera and the earpiece right next to it. Below that is the test sensitive buttons for home, menu, back and search. On this side you have your micro USB port. You have your volume rockers right here. You have your 2D and 3D camera mode switch, which I'll show you how that works when we look at the camera. Then you have your two stage camera button here. You can hold it down once to focus and then click, click on it to actually take the picture once the focus is done. On the top you have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and the power button. Don't have anything here at the bottom. But on the back here, you have dual 5 megapixel cameras with dual LED flash and 720p video recording and can record in 3D as well too. So the way that works is, is that when you record in 3D, both cameras are on and you record or take pictures in 3D and 720p. When you're in 2D, only one of the cameras is on and it works pretty much like a standard camera. You saw some of the videos that we uploaded in both 3D and 2D and it's all right. It's on par with pretty much a cell phone. It's not anything that's going to blow you away in terms of quality. It, I do wish it was just a little bit better in the picture pictures as well too. It's pretty kind of standard from maybe a cell phone from maybe a year ago and hopefully you know maybe the next iteration is to have better cameras or, or something. Right on the back here we'll open up the battery door which shows you the 8GB pre-installed SD card and 1730 milliamp hour battery. That's pretty much it for the hardware tour here. Internally, it does power with a 1.2 GHz dual core processor. You do have 4G and 10 inside of it with uh, 3G data as well, too. You have Wi Fi, Bluetooth, GPS, all the things that you would expect. For software, it is running um, Android 2.3 Gingerbread with HTC Sense UI 3.0 on here. And some pretty unique things with 3.0. First thing you notice, it's a lot more graphically powerful than the, each, uh, than the um, previous versions of Sense UI. And the lock screen is pretty cool, too. You, you actually have these little um, icons here that you can actually drag to the ring. And if you drag it to the ring and drop it in there, it'll unlock and go to that specific application. And those are customizable, which I'll show you where you can do that. And this thing is too, so like I have it set to use it for weather, but you can have just a regular wallpaper or something different on there if you want to. Dragging the ring up unlocks it, and you come here to the main screen. You have your seven desktops, and you can do this nice little cool uh, 3D carousel effect like that. Also hit the home button, brings you to, uh, brings you up to this option where you can tap on to the desktop that you want. Do have your customizations available, stuff you've seen, such as the scenes, skins, wallpaper, and you can even customize the lock screen. Show you here, and you can choose which type of lock screen that you want. And then you can hit settings, and this is where you can customize it. So if you want to swap out mail for Blockbuster, you can do that, or the or the calculator. Or you can swap it back to, let's see, where's mail or Gmail if you want to. But that's pretty much, you kind of get the idea how that kind of works there. For uh, pre installed software, it's pretty much standard stuff that you would expect. A lot of the stuff is actually uninstallable as well, too. But you do have, you know, Sprint TV, Sprint Zone, Sprint Hot, Hotspot. You do have Spider Man 3D game pre installed. You have Voice Search. Oh, well, I clicked on that by accident. Go ahead and head out of that. Go back in here. You have Telnav, you have Watch. Watch is at HTC's uh, sort of movie um, store, so you can watch movies um, right through that particular application, which is pretty cool. Um, you can view 3D content through YouTube on here, so if you hit YouTube and you open it up, it'll show a 3D icon next to anything that's been uploaded in 3D. You have uh, Peep, HTC Hub, HTC Likes. Those are all things that you need uh, an account for, so you got to sign up for a Sense account to use those features. NASCAR, stuff that you would normally expect inside these phones. You can you can have frequent ones and you have your downloaded right there. And a lot looks like a lot of that stuff is uninstallable as well too. Swiping down, show you the notification section. You have your most uh, recently used applications right here. Your notifications will show up here in the center. And your quick settings right here for Wi-Fi, hotspot, mobile network, 4G, Bluetooth, GPS, all settings. Or your memory, you go right into here and this is where you can manage all of your uh, running applications. If you hit the little X, it'll close out that particular application. You can also hit kill all and it'll close all of them out. A couple of things I wanted to show you here that I didn't do in the original recording. I wanted to show you the keyboard. You do have the option of the HTC keyboard if you wanted to. And you also have the option of, let's do another input method here. 
do have the option to swipe as well too. Just swipe around like that. Also wanted to show you the web browser. Open that up. You can show that it does support flash. It's pretty much this is the standard Android browser. It does have flash support and pinch to zoom. Type in there. Now it's not as smooth as you would like it to be, especially with elements that have a lot of flash content like uh, this web page here with the SPN. But it does have it on there and you can do it in portrait or uh, landscape mode here as you can see. Just like that. So that is uh, pretty much Sentry Wire sort of a nutshell. It's a lot smoother and, and, and sleeper of an experience, I would definitely say, than previous versions. But it's still familiar for those that like Sentry Wire that have used other phones with Sentry Wire on it. So it's still going to be pretty familiar to you. As far as uh, battery life, battery life is greatly improved of the first Evo. You definitely can get about a full day if you're a heavy, if you're sort of a heavy user, you can probably get a full day's charge out of it. If you're if you're bigger than that, you're probably still going to want to carry the charger around with you. If you're light to intermediate user, you can probably go about a day and a half or so. That'll be stretching it a little bit. It really depends on how much you're doing there. The 4G works really well on it here. Um, I can't test 4G indoors here for some reason. 4G doesn't come inside the, the building here that I'm in. But outside when I use 4G, it worked as expected. Call quality is also good as well too. Uh, people could hear me well, I could hear them well. Wasn't anything out of ordinary when doing that. I didn't experience any drop calls. Let's take a look here at the camera. Show you, kind of show you how that works. Right now the camera's in 2D mode. You're not gonna be able to see it when it switches to 3D mode, but the way you do that is by just flipping the switch over just like that and it switches to 3D mode, now it's going to be able to take pictures and video in 3D. Now as far as the 3D itself, as far as the content itself in 3D, um, I wasn't terribly impressed with it. It seems like I remember at, um, let me see if I can find some 3D content here, I seem to remember back at uh, CTIA when we first recorded this that the 3D was a lot more profound and it seemed like it was the whole operating system was in 3D and it seemed like we had a different screen. Really this, it really all depends on what, you're, what, what you've recorded and what angle you have it at. The 3D effect really doesn't work as well as when I saw it back then. So not sure what they did there. They might have just switched the screen out. It might not be as good. They might have made some changes there. There's some technical issues or something like that. But the 3D right now, beforehand it felt like it was really a 3D phone. But right now it feels like it's pretty gimmicky on top of this particular um, on the top of this particular phone here. So that is the HTC EVO 3D. It's actually a really good phone here. It's definitely an improvement over the EVO uh, 4G from a year ago. The battery life is a lot better. The processor's faster. The overall experience with Sentry Y is a lot better. It's a, it's overall, it's definitely improved upon it. The 3D on here honestly feels gimmicky. It isn't as profound as I remember seeing it back in March at CTIA. It's nice that it's on here, but it isn't going to be something that's a deal breaker on this cell phone. It's something that's going to sell it. The phone itself is what's going to sell itself, and it's a really good phone on the Sprint network. So this is Bowman here from BW1.com reminding you, subscribe to our YouTube page, follow us on Twitter, become a fan of our Facebook fan page. Also check out our written review, the link to that, and all of our social media is in the description. And as always, live your tech world in high definition.